Bird. My name is Linda Chavez Thompson. I am the candidate, Democratic candidate for Lieutenant Governor for the state of Texas, and I'm very honored and proud to be here with all of you this morning. Uh, I, I want to thank Council uh, Representative uh, Emma Costa for the invitation to be here. I was inviting her to one of my meet and greet events that I had, and she says, oh, you're going to be in town? And I said, yes. She says, why don't you come to my meet the candidates uh, that I'm having in, in my council district? And I told her that I was going to be very glad and proud to be here. The reason that I'm running for Lieutenant Governor is very simple. Uh, I believe that we need a change in leadership in Austin, Texas. I believe that the change in leadership has to prioritize the things that our families need in, in Texas. And that is uh, certainly a better educational system for our children, a better social network for our families, and very definitely talking about the infrastructure needs of our communities. Our communities, such as El Paso, such as San Antonio, where I live, the Valley, have oftentimes been ignored, and they've been ignored because perhaps for you it's because you're way on, on the other side, and some people say you are practically in New Mexico, and uh, sometimes you're counted as part of New Mexico, but you are Texas. As Lieutenant Governor, one of the objectives that I have is very simple. We need to have a better opportunity for our children. We need to assure ourselves that our children are getting the opportunity for a better education, that they're graduating from high school, and right now we have one out of three that are not, and certainly one out of two Latinos are not. One of the things is, and these are signs that are very intimidating over here, uh, but one of, the, one of the things is that I stand for education, I stand for a better life for you and your families, better wages, better benefits for all of you. I've been a lifelong uh, Democrat, I've been a lifelong 40 years in the labor movement, so I know what it's all about to struggle every day, and as Lieutenant Governor, I figured out that it's my job to make your life and the, fam the, the, the life of your family is much better. So thank you very much for allowing me to be with you this morning. Gracias. two questions from the students, but she will not probably have time for questions from the audience, okay? Let me just say that if, if there's two questions from the audience, I have time for that. I, I don't have a flight, it's just that I have other commitments that, that I have made that drive me to get out of here faster than I would like. But I would be more than glad to take the, the two from the students and two from the audience. I have time for that. Thank you so much. Hi, my name is Darlene Wilson. My first question is to Mr. Chavez Thompson. How do you intend to persuade your colleagues to support the Dream Act? I think this Dream Act has to be supported because simply uh, punishing children for having been here because their parents brought them here is absolutely ludicrous, it's stupid, and I think that Congress should pass the Dream Act. I am hoping that, because of course this is a federal uh, legislation, I am hoping that we can get behind this, that we can pass it, and I think we have a, a very good opportunity once Congress comes back, and they didn't pass it, and I think it's a lot of politics involved, but I think once they come back after the election, they have to get down to business, and, and one of the things is that we have to apply a lot of pressure to the, the congressional delegation that you have here, certainly to the Senate, certainly letters to the President, emails, whatever we need to do. The DREAM Act has to be passed. The DREAM Act is going, right now there's a lot of our children who have graduated. Once they reach the age of 30, they will literally be taken out of the system where they can automatically get citizenship for having an education and it is such a shame to waste that education. It's such a shame that we are punishing young people who have excelled in college for that. And I am very much in support of the Green Act. We have to figure out a way to get it passed once Congress comes back after this election. Let's make it happen and let's do it strongly supporting the President and others who have sided with this issue 100%. So let's make it happen. The Green Act really has to benefit those children that have gotten that education. Thank you. My second question is, in your page for candidates, you have stated that if important historical barriers are included, like Thomas Jefferson, you won't fund them. So what will happen if all the books are schools and important historical figures? 
I was almost ashamed of what happened at the State Board of Education where people who look like me have been written out of history books. People who look like you and the history of many of our Latino heritage have been written out. Uh, it is almost comical that Henry Cisneros, who made a name for himself for so many years as a leader in our community, has been written out because he hasn't done anything for 10 or 15 years. In other words, there's nothing to write about him for 10 or 15 years. Well, the other side of that is Stephen F. Austin hasn't done anything for over 200 and some odd years, so. <laughs> he's still in the world. He's still in the They've taken out Texas County. Uh, they've taken out Dolores Huerta. They've taken out, as you said, Thomas Jefferson. Uh, but, and, and one of the other ludicrous things that they've done is they took out a controversial picture of a woman in a business suit with a briefcase because it was so controversial. What? That women should not become business people with briefcases because it might warp the minds of children under the fifth grade and below? Hello? You know, there's something wrong with the State Board of Education that has polarized themselves to exclude history that excludes us. So right now, because I'm the first Latino woman for Lieutenant Governor, running for Lieutenant Governor in the state of Texas, there's no, not going to be any mention of history in the making about that. Well, I hope that once I become lieutenant governor, at least they give me a little blurb, even if it's this big, in the history book. And I will guarantee you one thing. If I have anything to say about it as lieutenant governor, I don't know that I'm going to find the funds to buy those books. Okay? Thank you. Thank you for being here and letting us have a chance to talk with you. Now, our state constitution is such that the legislative session is every two years, 140 days. The two big things that my contacts have often tell me that the legislature must address, one is a bunch of shortcomings, two is redistricting based on our new census. What can you do to allow our legislatures and our government a chance to solve these two problems and have the funding? Because funding is going to go education, pensions and all. There's going to be less than 10% left over for all of the other functions of government. Where are we going to get the money? Who's going to be cut? What is your outlook on our budget for the coming years? We have a very, very tough job to do because Rick Perry and David Dewhurst didn't do their job. And I'm going to tell you one thing. We have to figure out a way where we don't cut education, a social network for our families and our children, and we have to figure out and who isn't paying their taxes and make sure that they do because we're already paying our taxes. Why we should allow other people who aren't paying to get away with not paying. Everything has to be on the table in this budget year to try to figure out how we can figure out no cuts in education, no cuts of our children being cut out of chips. And I will say this to you, one of the things that I, very, I hold very dear to my heart is the education field. I say no to that. We say no to any cutbacks where it affects seniors, children, our families. And I don't know how else to, to do this, but I'm, I'm, I'm very serious about this. We've got a billions of dollars of deficit, and the way that I say it is, how many zeros in a billion dollars? There's 11 with Perry and Dewhurst being the last two zeros in that. I'm there, I'm a student teacher at Columbus High School, and one of the things that, that sort of concerns me, and, and I've been teaching for 20 years, it's my 20th year, and I've seen the uh, dropout rate. Uh,